Shanghai. It's fast becoming the world's largest China film market continues and Hollywood has its de economic devotees. CCTV Sui Ye has been speaking to some Chinese film industry insiders on what effect U.S. movies are having and will have on China's Owen film industry. 2014 has been a big year for Hollywood in China. Transformers 4 broke box office records, earning 319 million U.S. dollars. Hollywood studios are now openly targeting the Chinese market with films franchises like Transformers and Kung Fu Panda. Film analyst Bi Chenggong says it's to be expected. Hollywood doesn't usually just do single market films. They usually target an entire region like Godzilla, which was aimed at the whole of Asia. Harry Potter was more European-centric. It did there, but didn't do well in Asia. I'm not surprised Hollywood is moving more into specific consumer targeting. I think this is very normal. I think this shows the level of maturity in the U.S. film industry. Several Hollywood films were able to draw revenues of over 40 million U.S. dollars from the Chinese market in 2014. Apart from one or two expectations, Chinese films haven't been able to match that bracket. With more Hollywood blockbusters due for release in China soon, concern is growing that there could be a negative impact on the Chinese film industry. But Bi Chenggong doesn't think so. This is actually going to be good for Chinese filmmakers. There will be more competition for local markets. Our storytelling and technical abilities are still lagging behind. So having a big brother like Hollywood teaching us would benefit us well. China restricts the number of foreign movie releases to just 34 per year, although that's set to expand. With China's annual box office predicted to reach a value of nearly 5 billion US dollars, it's important to Hollywood is becoming ever greater. But domestic films are doing well, with the most successful genres being comedy and romance. We have about 400 mainland films approved by the State Administration of Radio, Film and Television, which make it to theaters every year. Some are only shown for a day, the good ones maybe a month. Coming up next year, a Chinese Hollywood collaboration with Chinese director Zhang Yimou at the helm, his first English language film, The Great Wall, with star Chinese and U.S. actors, and will be produced by Legendary Pictures. It's set to open in November 2016. Some critics say that by catering to a Chinese crowd, it will lower the quality of the films because requires a more simple and more universal and formulaic theme. Others also say that by adding cultural content into films unnaturally will do more damage than good if it's incomplete or inaccurate. But with the success of Transformers Force, it won't stop Hollywood from trying. Feiya, CCTV, Beijing. A prudent and responsible arms sales policy and its arms trade has been following the relevant international laws. Defense Ministry spokesman Yang Yujun made the remarks at a monthly news briefing on Thursday in response to some concerns in the media about the increase of China's arms sales. Earlier, a Sweden-based institution said that this has risen to the fifth highest globally. CCTV's Han Bing has the details. Testing the waters for expansion of China's arms sales. For the first time, a PLA offshore patrol ship has been delivered to an African country. Nigeria has bought two such vessels. Globally, China has sold over 20 different vessels. Chinese military contracts on several fronts have seen a steady growth and also growing of Western concerns. But the Chinese Defense Ministry stressed that the country is upholding a prudent and responsible policy. China has always adhered to the principle that arms exports should not impair peace, security and stability of regions or the world at large and does not interfere with the internal affairs of the recipient countries. China's arms sales have abided by the relevant UN resolutions and international laws. Due to lower prices, practicability on the battlefields and good after-sales services, China's military products have found their markets. Most of its exports are homegrown armored vehicles, light weaponry, airplanes and ships. And most are also well used by the PLA. Military expert In Zhuo points out that China's arms exports account for only a small percentage of the global total. It is groundless to criticize the country for its arms trade increase. 
China's arms sales are on the basis of good diplomatic relations. It's based on the principle of mutual trust and benefit in helping relevant regions to carry out normal defense needs. The arms trade will not change the regional security balance. Injo also says that China's arms sales are not motivated by generating export earnings. The government has more control over it. China is not competing with leading arms sellers like the U.S. and Russia in the same market. And China does not have the aim to replace them on the global market. Not like some other countries, the military development would not rely on arms sales, as its own military has a huge procurement requirements that can ease the arms research and development fees.